Hi folks, my name is Melanie McSally. I am your profit optimization and technology expert, and I am here once again for another episode of Free Be Friday. I think this is episode four, and I'm super excited because, um, well, today we're going to be talking about websites uh, and how to monetize versus um, have a pretty brochure. So I will talk more about that in a second. But what really excites me about today is you can see I have this pretty background. Um, and uh, the reason why I started doing these freebie Fridays was to give my um, audience something free every Friday. But it was also because I had a new set of clients that were looking for streaming services, uh, video on demand, OTT services. And so I've been doing a lot of research and learning on how to monetize on webs, on um, YouTube, uh, learning how to create videos, how to create cool backgrounds, how to do all sorts of different streaming things. Um, and that's one of the benefits about having a technology strategist in your back pocket is that you know, you think about something you want to achieve and you don't have to worry about how to make that happen, right? You just dream it up and we figure out how to do it. Uh, and so that's what we've been doing. We've been learning all the new ways to use YouTube and other uh, video and streaming services, uh, whether it be video membership sites, uh, streaming services, uh, video on demand, all of that, all that cool stuff. So Today, um, I'm coming to you with this pretty background that I created with the help of my team. And I'm super excited about it because I just love creating things. So, um, so you're getting to experience it right along with me. Um, I started these Freebie Fridays with absolutely no YouTube channel whatsoever and really no knowledge on how to best leverage YouTube. So as we go from week to week, you will see the progress of us learning and developing and uh, growing that strategy. Um, so, so you'll be learning right, right along with us and we will be sharing our knowledge with you. Now, of course, some of that might just be links to other people's YouTube videos because why we recreate the wheel, sorry, um, when, you know, other people are, have been doing it for far longer and, and their videos are fantastic. That's how we're learning. Um, so. Anyway, uh, just wanted you to see that you don't have to be a technology expert to, um, to learn something new. Everybody uh, is learning and growing. Um, also, even your technology experts have areas of technology that they're not an expert in. And you can see that um, we're learning and growing right alongside you. Um, but that's the beauty of having one in your pocket is um, it doesn't take us very long to learn something new. One of the main things that uh, we learn in engineering school is how to quickly learn a new language, a new technology. So um, in my first job, uh, just a little uh, side note, my first job, I actually uh, wrote a membership site. Now this was two decades ago, maybe, no, 15 years ago about, that I wrote a membership site. So this was back before membership sites were a thing. Um, and it took almost 15 languages. Uh, it was built in Apache Open for Business, and that system was on so many different languages that we all had to learn. Um, I was at Harvard at the time, and uh, the other engineers on our team, uh, we had you know a team of network engineers, all sorts of people on this team, and um, yeah, it was crazy. We worked some long hours to learn all of these different languages and technologies, but it really brought to light how fast you need to learn new languages and new technologies to um, to evolve because you know um, so many languages uh, and frameworks and applications are coming out on the daily that in order to keep up with it you really have to be good at 
learning languages and learning technology and learning applications. So um, the beauty about having a technology strategist in your pocket is that you don't have to do that. You could just dream up the dreams and, uh, and we'll figure out the how for you. So anyway, that was a long-winded way of saying I'm really excited about my cool background. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk for a second about um, websites and the difference between a pretty brochure and a monetized website. So last week we talked about digital courses and membership sites and all the technology, the software, the tools that you could leverage to um, offer these products and services, these digital products and services, how you can take your uh, free content and turn it into monetized content. Um, so how you can take your podcast, your blog, turn it into a membership site, how you can take your uh, videos that you're offering to your clients in your fitness world, things like that, how you can create video on demand. Uh, membership sites, and um, how you can take your book and turn it into a digital course. So that's all on the monetized website um, side, and we talked at great length about that last week. But as promised, I wanted to talk to you this week about the pretty brochure side of the equation. So websites serve two uh, purposes. One is to inform and one is to convert. So the informed side still has a strong purpose. Now people, um, they don't put as much value in this because it it's hard to see the conversion, the numbers, so to speak. It's harder to see. Um, however, it's really important. So here's why. You know, if, you, if you're if you advertising, say, um, or you're just in the exposure arena in general, so the start of every funnel is to gain exposure, right? So you, you, have, to, you have to be in front of people, whether that be in person or virtual, um, in order for them to know who you are and to decide to work with you, right? I mean attraction, right? If they don't know about you, they're not going to work with you. So it takes about seven impressions for somebody to um, get to know you enough that they'll trust you and work with you. Now some of that is opt-in, some of that is reading about you, some of that is just sort of um, seeing all the different places that you're on. So there are different ways to um, get more validity in your arena, right? So if somebody sees you on CNN or ABC or NBC or any of the big networks out there, they're going to think to themselves, oh, well, they must be a legitimate person in, in business because these these businesses are legitimate and they wouldn't have them on if they weren't, right? So, you know, you're you're getting that um, that cross promotion, right? So you're that transfer of trust. You trust CNN, ABC, CBS, all of them. So you're transferring that trust onto this person that's on that platform. If you're um, if you're on a stage and the promoter is somebody that you know, like, and trust, then again, that's a transfer of trust. So that ups the level of validity. If somebody has a book, you know, authors are considered experts. So again, that's another level of transfer of trust. But just having all of these different things is also a level of trust, right? So it, it speaks to how long you've been in business, how much you've accomplished, how many people you've served, um, how, how many testimonies you have. So, um, so all of this helps in people realizing that you're a real person, you're a real business, and you are somebody that could solve their problem. So when we're talking about creating this pretty brochure, um, it's just an easy way to describe how this website should work because people often conflate 
uh, monetize websites and pretty brochures into one website. Um, and that's not what you want to do because they serve two different purposes. Um, they have two different objectives and they have two different strategies for how they should be laid out. And you don't want to use one for the other because if you do, you will not meet that objective. It's kind of like the old saying, um, jack of all trades, master of none. So if your website is trying to be the jack of all trades, it's going to be the master of none. Um, so you want to have both. And here's how you do that. So you have your pretty brochure. Think uh, branded, think on point, think on messaging, and think minimalistic, right? So you want to have enough information on your website that they know who you are, what you do, why you, but not so much information that they're just overwhelmed, right? So you don't want to give them your entire life story. You don't want to show them every single thing in your arsenal of things. You just want to give them enough information that they, that they can build that know, like, and trust. So some key aspects to have. Who are you as the founder of the company? Who are, you know, like how many teammates do you have? If you have a big team, maybe you're, maybe you have a small section that are the important people on the team, the board members, the founders, the leaders, the executive team. Um, and you want to really convey through pictures and words your mission, vision, and values of your organization. So for instance, um, I know some companies that use their uh, Who Are We section. Um, they don't actually display the values of their company, but instead their employee photos show people with their dogs, people with their family, people on, um, you know, doing fun things on vacation. And that gives us the sense that that company is a family-oriented company, that they put their people before process. Um, and so they don't have to say it with words because that's the feeling we get. So that's what branding does for you, right? You want, you want your brand to uh, express who you are as an organization, what you value, what you want to achieve, uh, what your vision is, right? And you want it to be consistent across all the mediums. So all social media, all websites, um, things like that. Now you might have a different brand for your person than you do for your business, but what, for one entity, you want to be branded across the whole thing. You want to be consistent, right? So that no matter where people find you, they always see the same brand. Um, okay, so now we have the mission, vision, values, and we have the who's involved, right? Like who's in the company, who's the founder, who's the main players in the company. We also want to have testimonies, right? Um, we want to showcase all the ways that you're out there in the world. So, you know, who are the big, big brands you serve? Who are some people that have some amazing testimonies about you? Um, what, um, what can you use as good transfer of trust? Like, have you been on any major networks, any major stages, anything like that? Um, you know, so brands we're proud to serve, um, things our customers are saying about us, you know, stuff like that. And you can do these as like small little banners that just have a couple of key logos. You don't need a whole lot. You don't need to list out every single um, logo that you're working with, brand that you're working with. You just want the, the recognizable ones, right? Um, and then you want uh, some key messages, right? So you, you want to target people's emotions because people buy with their emotions. And you want to do it on one side or the other. You want to either focus on hope 
or focus on hell on earth. And what I mean by this is for hope, you're talking about inspiration. Imagine a world where all your dreams were possible. Imagine a world where you have everything you could ever desire. You know, imagine a world where you could have your cake and eat it too, right? This is the hope side. And then you transition into at such and such a company, this is what we do, right? And it's just your main branding, right? And then the hell on earth is, are you suffering from blah, blah, blah? Could you use a little yada, yada, yada? And then you transition into, this is what we do, right? So you're really targeting that emotion because we know we buy with our hearts rather than our brains. Okay, and then lastly, you have a section that is your products and services, right? And this is just a simple box and keep in mind, you're keeping minimalistic. So this is just a simple box that lists out your products and services. It does not specify every single detail of every single product. So what you could do is something like um, a product box for coaching, a product box for products that just says, we offer an array of products and blah, 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 blah. Services, courses, events, so on and so forth. Now they click through, they get a little bit more information in that specific area, and then they click through, they get the product pages for each of those. Now, so that is the information. Like I was saying before, people take around seven impressions to build that sort of uh, draw to work with you, right? So when they're looking at an ad, they're likely going to say, hmm, that's interesting, let me go check them out. Then they'll go to your website. This is where the pretty brochure comes into play. So you want that pretty brochure that tells them that you are professional, that you have a well-branded, cohesive and consistent message and brand, and that you're not overwhelming them with information. It's just enough information, it's not too much information. Um, and that's not the page they click through on the ad, but that's if they go off on their own and look you up, because that's generally what they're going to do, right? Now, your monetized pages, your product pages, those are what we call squeeze pages. And the objective of a squeeze page is to squeeze them into buying this, which means one choice, one choice only. I mean, technically there's two choices, buy or die, right? It's buy this or get off my site. Um, so again, you're taking them through a, a story on your page why or what will I do for you? What problem am I solving? Am I giving you hope or am I solving your hell on earth? Who am I? Uh, why do you want to work with me? And why is my product or service your solution? Right? So this is your typical squeeze page. There is no other way for them to click off this page other than the back button or the red X right? There's no social media links. There's no banner at the top with links to all your products and services. Nothing. A squeeze page is literally only about this product. This product. That's it. And do not make it about you. Make it about them. What's in it for them? Why do they need this? What will it serve them? How will it serve them? What will it do for them? It's all about them, okay? This is just for this product. Now when they click the checkout button, you can give them a way to upgrade, right? To upsell, but on this page, it's just this product. That's it. And when you do advertisements, you link to a product page. So you advertise for a product, not all your products, a product, okay? Because people leave sites for two reasons. One is 
it's complicated, it's difficult, it's confusing, it's uh, overwhelming, right? But overwhelming from the perspective of, is this too hard to, to work with you? I Like, it's taking me too long, there's too many clicks, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't, right? It's too difficult. The other is choice paralysis. How do I know what I need? You're the expert. Why are you giving me all these choices? You just tell me what I need to buy. So you want to remove all barriers from people working with you. One choice, one choice, one choice. How many choices? One choice, <laughs> right? So advertising is for one choice. And if you have multiple products, you do multiple advertising, okay? All right, so remember, minimalistic, one choice, do not overwhelm with information on either site, right? Just because it's pretty brochure doesn't mean give them your whole life story. It means give them the need to know, right? Because over time, you're working with them, you're going to they're going to learn more about you. It's kind of like that first date, right? You don't want to um, give them everything they're ever going to learn about you on that first date because then there's nothing for them to learn on the second date. There's no reason for them to continue forward. You want to be a little mysterious, right? So your pretty brochure needs to just be enough information, just enough to give them the information they need to get to know you enough to start to work with you. Now, the one thing I didn't mention on a squeeze page is that, you know, when they try to exit because they've decided they're not ready to work with you just yet, they're not ready to pay that money, that's when you have this pop-up that's like, but wait, right? If you're not ready, here's your opt-in. So that's where your opt-in goes. You can also put it on the page, but generally speaking, that's where it goes. Now, if you are looking to just build a list and you're advertising to just build a list, it goes straight to the opt-in. There isn't even sales on the page at all, right? It goes to the opt-in, you give away something for free, then you survey them to make sure that they're the right client for you, and then you do the whole um, sales in the drip campaign instead of on the page itself. So that is uh, my tips for you on the difference between a pretty brochure website and a monetized website. So when you are looking to hire somebody to build one of these sites for you, the pretty brochure is where you can hire your website designers and your graphic artists because these aren't meant to convert. They're meant to inform and they're meant to be pretty. So you want to look for somebody who has an expertise in branding and messaging, right? And then on the monetized website, you actually are looking for people that have um, marketing and technology in their background. So rather than uh, graphic artists and website designers, because website designers are, are basically designing the pretty brochures. And what you need for your monetized website is sales conversion. So these are two different skill sets and it's possible to find somebody with both skill sets, um, but it's also rare. So when you're looking for the right person, you want to make sure you're looking for the right skill set. So pretty brochure is graphic artists and website designers uh, and monetized websites are uh, technology folks, engineers, uh, marketeers, sales specialists, things of that nature. Um, and both both take branding. So um, brand experts are, are great at helping, with, helping you with your messaging, with the design of your funnel, um, and with your overall brand aesthetic. So hopefully that helps you. Um, again, my name is Melanie McSally. 
I am your profit optimization and technology expert. I can help you with both of these things. Um, if you liked this video and you want more free tips from me, from my team, please subscribe and hit the little bell below so that you don't miss a single one of these videos. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.